All right, so we're on the next video in the series, which is now modeling between Maya and Blender and Blender and Maya. What I'm gonna be doing here is going through each tool in each respective software and then switching so you can see the application of that software. One of the key tools that is like your Swiss Army knife in Maya, which is your multi-cut tool. So if I hit Q and then go into edge mode, now you can see we are here. In order to get your modeling tools, like you can actually hold shift right mouse button and you can enter any of these modeling tools and it'll take you right into component mode. So that's kind of a quick way to do that. Now if I want to cut here with the multi-cut tool, you can just by left mouse button clicking and you can create it on faces, on edges, on vertices, and then right mouse button to accept the cut as you can see here. And then I'm still in the tool using right mouse button and if I wanna exit the tool, I can press Q. So in Blender, Blender calls it the knife tool. Let's go into here now and we want to cut on this top cylinder face. So in order to get that, it's called our knife tool, okay? So you can see it's this tool over here. You can cut or use K for knife, right? So K and now we've entered our knife tool and we can start cutting on the face very similar. You'll notice that there's no pole or cap cylinder here. It's just an open face, but it still works the same. So I'm just left mouse button clicking here. And if I want to accept a cut, it works very similarly. You just hit right click and we can start a new cut. And if you want to accept a cut, you simply hit enter, right? So that works very well and makes things a lot easier. Now, the thing that's a little bit different in Maya, and this is why I called it the Swiss Army knife, is that if I go into multi-cut, you can hold control and hover and you can insert edge loops with this, right? So if I click hold control and then click there, I can add it wherever I need to. Now you can also hold control and hover. And then if I wanna add it right in the middle, you just right mouse button or excuse me, that's Blender. You can just middle mouse button and it'll add it right in the middle, which is super nice. And I can hit Q to exit the tool, double click that edge, and then let's say I wanna move this on the normal. Like in the last video, you hold control, middle mouse button, and you're good to go. I know we just looked at the multi-cut tool, but if I press Q, go to edge mode, and here's what's super nice about Maya, right? You wanna to get to any tool at all, hold shift, right mouse button, and it's going to be there for context sensitive components, right? So again, like these faces here, if I hold shift right mouse button, now I have all of the face sensitive, context sensitive components for face. Like I can extrude face, bevel face, poke faces, so on and so forth, right? What I want to look at is go back into edge mode and then shift right mouse button and then there's insert edge loop tool. And then now it adds in edges. So you see that did a bunch because I was playing with it earlier. So if I control Z to undo that, if I go up here at the top right, I have my tool settings and you can change the number here to whatever you want, right? And you can change it to equal distance, relative distance. You can add in like three edges. If you know you're going to add in those edges, boom, just like that, right? Now in Blender, as far as I know, the knife tool doesn't insert edge loops. And if I'm wrong, you guys will let me know in the comment. Instead, we want to use the loop cut tool, right? So to know the loop cut tool works with control R, right? And so now actually let me, let me just deselect everything. So it's a little easier to see control R. And then now we've entered our loop cut tool and you can see what blender is asking you is saying, what is the loop edge loops that you want to select? This is the edge loops. Now, during this phase, this is super nice, you can middle mouse drag or middle mouse scroll, excuse me, and add in however many edges you want. So you can increase that. And then you just say, okay, hey, I wanna add three. You click here. Now you can position the edges exactly where you want. And then if you wanna just slap it right in the middle, like I said last time, right mouse button, and there you go. And then if we wanna position these, we can. Now you can increase, you see this? Smoothness, smoothness is super nice, right? So for example, actually I'll control, actually I'll undo that, control R, add that in there with one loop cut here, okay? And 
Let's say I want to add in another loop up here. Control R, left mouse button to enter, and then I can just slap it right in the middle with right mouse button. And then I can increase the smoothness here. That'll kind of move it out on the normal, right? So you can do that similarly inside of Maya. If I control backspace, shift right click to go into multi-cut. Actually, because like if you go to the insert edge loop tool, you can see that you can do the insert edge loop tool. So I'll just do not using increased edges. But this button here, increase or insert with edge flow, I can click it there. Boom. And it'll kind of add it there. <laughs> kind of for whatever reason. Oh, I see it got a little confused with these edges. It didn't work that well there. Maybe I'll do it on the bottom one uh, here. Boom. Perfect. It's kind of annoying that that bothered it, but whatever. If you did it, an alternative way is to just control middle mouse button, slap it right in the middle, double click, W, move on the normal. A few extra steps, but hey, it works. Okay, so we have that with the loop cut tool. The next one, which is probably the one you'll be using a ton, which is extrude. So if I go back to Maya here and I want to look around here. What I can do is select these faces. Let's say I just select these faces here. And I'll close the tool settings. I can use shift right mouse button to extrude face or control E will also give me that. And then you can use extrude. So extrude right on the normal, right? So that moves it straight up, which is nice. If I want to use change the world transformation. That's what this icon does. And then now I can just use the world transforms to do that. Okay. So again, just move that up, hit Q to accept a tool in blender. If I go here now and select these faces, so I hit three to enter face mode and I want to extrude this, you have extrude here and you can just do E for extrude. And there you go. So not control E control E is Maya and then E is Blender, okay? So if I go back to Maya, and let's say this kind of threw me off because for whatever reason, it's a different function in Blender. But if I select these faces here, let's say I just, I go down here and I shift left mouse button to select the ring of edges, excuse me, faces, control E to extrude, and automatically moves it on, on the normal, right? Which is nice. So it gives me thickness and then you also have things like thickness and then offset, which behaves, which we'll look at in a second, like inset. So you can inset this and then in Maya, you can repeat last through G. So if I hit G and then extrude and there you go. So we can move that on the normal or sometimes thickness works a little bit better. Great. And you hit Q to accept the extrude. Awesome. In Blender, what I want to do is let me just add in another loop here at the bottom. So it's kind of equivalent, right? Yeah. So I'll add one more here. And if I go to three and remember, we want to select the face loop. So it's not uh, shift because I'll do this a lot where I'll like forget, but sometimes you can do shift alt or control alt to select the face loop, but sometimes it doesn't work. It'll like select the face loop. So using control uh, helps with that. Now, if I want to extrude here, these faces, if I just hit E, look what happens, right? It just, it just uses the normal uh, here. So this is now Blender has the equivalent, right? Of Maya as in if I go into face mode and hold shift right mouse button, these marking menus are specifically face operations for modeling. Well, if you go into Blender, without having to use all of these, what you can do is hit control F. So the way it is, is control V for vertex, control E for edges, all of your edge modeling tools escape, and then control F for all your face modeling tools. And then you have extrude face along normals. Great. So I can just start to extrude face along normals. And there you go. Now, what if I wanted to do the inset, right? So, Maya's is nice because it's all built into the extrude tool, right? You would offset, 
then extrude along normal and good to go. In Blender, what you would need to do is an inset. So hit I for inset, drag that down, then control F to get all your face modeling tools and extrude face along normals. And then now you can extrude face along normals and there you go. So a couple extra actions there, but it works out all the same. So that's super helpful now. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a few seconds and give a big thank you to all my current patrons. My Patreon has grown really fast over the past few months. We're almost at 100 members. I've heard from quite a few members that they want to see custom courses, so stay tuned as I have some big announcements coming over the next few videos on future courses. Now back to the video. One thing I do want to bring up, you guys will probably yell at me for not bringing it up earlier, but if I go to Maya, one thing that'll affect potentially modeling, it does in Blender, is the scale. We've uniformly scaled here, so it's not gonna be an issue. But if you wanna freeze the scale, freeze the transformations, you can just use this kind of snowflake for freeze, freeze transformation, boom. You can see it resets and sets scale X, Y, Z. Now, I'm, now that I, we've been modeling, you'll see all of this here, which is history. Okay, if you wanna get rid of that, you can freeze transformations, delete history, good to go, you're back to normal. I recommend freezing, or not freezing, but at least deleting history fairly regularly because it'll start to bog things down. I've seen some pretty nightmare scenarios from students that worked on an entire project and never deleted history and it caused all sorts of problems. So do that and you should be good to go. So equivalent into Blender is it doesn't have history, so you're good there. But if I hit N to open up this panel here and I want to freeze these transforms, you hit control A. So always remember control A, we have rotation and scale. You can do all transforms or rotation and scale, boom, okay? Now if I go tab to enter back into modeling mode, if I hit two for edge, another tool that I use all the time is bevel. Actually, I'll, I'll stay consistent. Let me do this in, in Maya first. So I go into edge mode here, and double click this edge, and then you can shift right mouse button, bevel edge, boom, there you go. And then you have fraction, you can increase the amount of segments and do whatever it is that you need to do. I can hit Q to accept the cut, there we go. And if I alt tab, and we wanna do blender here, to get bevel, you do control B. And then you get this, where we start to drag up and then you can scroll on your middle mouse button and we get a nice tight bevel here with an extra segment. You can actually see all the settings here at the bottom. I think I'll have a banner there that blocks it, but you know, you can see it's, it's all of these settings here that you can adjust, but that's how you get to your bevel tool in Maya and how you get it to in Blender. Another tool that I use fairly regularly is like, let's say you're in here, I delete a face or whatever, I wasn't paying attention, delete it, and we want to cap that or fill it. If I go into edge mode, nice thing is you can select the edge, shift right mouse button and fill hole. And then you just fill the hole and you're good to go. Now you'll see something here we'll talk about is normals. But if I go back to blender and go to three, delete this, you can do that with delete or X. So if you press X, it does the same thing. Now it's saying, hey, do you wanna delete vertices, edges, faces, only faces, only edges, so, or limited dissolve. If you're deleting faces, most of the time, I'm just doing all faces. Very rare where I'm like, hey, like I'll select faces and it's like delete. And it's like, you know what? Only faces, but leave me the edge and vertice. I can't recall ever needing to do that. So I have seen some examples of people using it, but I don't use it that often. But if I select that face, delete, and then faces, boom, then you can select that edge and then hit F for fill and then you're good to go, right? So we have, you know, you have extrude, inset, we looked at bevel, loop cut, knife, um, poly build, I won't be looking at that now. And, oh yeah, shrink and flatten. So shrink and flatten is a pretty good one. So for example, one thing I do fairly regularly in Maya is if I'm in here and for whatever reason, let's say these tools, these faces are no longer flat and I need them flat, okay? Well, the way to do that is I can alt left mouse button, 
select these faces, and then use my scale tool with R, and boom, just scale in the one axis, and you're good to go. Okay, now what if you're not on a specific axis and you want to scale specific faces? So if I shift click with extrude, let's say I want to scale these, but you can see that they're not exactly on an axis. I'll go to the modeling toolkit and scale, and I'll use component here. And what that does, it kind of gives me an average of this, and then I can just boom, scale that along the average normals of these components, which is great. And that gives me pretty much what I need. If I head over now to Blender, what you can do again, like let's say if I move these vertices, uh, G and then Z, so I'm just moving these, you know, G, Z, moving these up, they're no longer planar, they're no longer flat. I hit three for face mode, and this gives me this. What's nice is you can actually go scale with S, Z, right, for the Z axis, and then hit zero, boom. Zero just says, hey, put it on the zero Z axis, and you can see it gets completely flat. Just get comfortable inside of Maya getting used to the marking menus, right? So again, these are context sensitive. Just simply holding right click, you see you have a ton of menus. Holding space bar gives you every single menu that you ever need. I almost don't ever go up here unless it's like a specific thing or I just forget. But if I want to, for example, look at the normals, you see that I talked about normals here, right? You see how it kind of messed up there? Well, I can hold space bar and go to mesh display and then pop it up. See, actually it's popping up on my other monitor, uh, unfortunately, so I have to use it up here. And then you can set this to what's called soften harden edge, which is essentially like an auto smooth, right? So if I select this mesh display soften harden edge, I didn't have it selected. You can see there it goes, it softened hardens. Inside of Blender, and this is where we'll wrap up and we can cover more modeling tools in a future video, is you see everything's faceted. If I right click that in object mode, so exit tap mode, you can do shade auto smooth. And you can see that it does the same thing. And you have the same angle here. The angle says 30. Inside of Maya, you go to channel box editor, there's your angle right there. You can put it to 30 if you want. And you get something pretty equivalent like inside of Blender. That's pretty nice. Oh, I hit spacebar. <laughs> so spacebar plays your animations uh, slider inside of Blender. Inside of Maya, it changes your uh, quad view, right? So Blender doesn't have quad view. So you can actually, so you'll see the quad view here. I can hover over and hit spacebar. That's cool. Blender doesn't have that. Instead, what it has is if you hover over the top corner of your window and just drag, you see how it turns into a crosshair? Drag that over and then now you got a new window. And if you want to set this to an orthographic view, I'll press N to get rid of this window. You can press Alt and then middle mouse drag as you're orbiting. So I'm orbiting and then hold Alt. Boom, see that? It snaps to an orthographic view. Okay, it says front orthographic. So it's just a nice way to set that up and then you can continue to work here on your other window. And if you want to create more windows, you can. Or if you want to get rid of them, like I can create another window, or let's say I created too many, then I can go to the crosshair and then just drag it over. So I go to the crosshair, hold left mouse button, drag it over, boom, it wipes it off. And then if you want to create an, another cursor or another window here, you can get something equivalent uh, to that. I'll do there. So we have left orthographic, front orthographic, very similarly set up inside of Maya. Okay, so there are a lot more tools and functions between Blender and Maya, but I wanted to kick off this series with a few videos that I know that should help a lot of people. I know it's like I'm making this video for the past version of myself. I was like, I wish there was something equivalent that shows this Maya to Blender because you spend a lot of time looking this up between each software. So hopefully this format's working. As I'm going through and doing something in Maya, I do the equivalent inside of Blender. Should help you understand the workflows between the two. Let me know if this format is working down in the comments below. I have a few more videos coming up. So be sure to check out my Patreon and I'll see you in the next video.